we're going to hit diagnostics for EVAP, covering all the major points from the gas cap restrictions, vent solenoids, purred solenoids, natural vacuum leak detection system, leak detection pumps, and the fuel tank pressure sensor operation. Critical things for you to know. One of the most expensive ways is to buy one of these adapter kits and you place the gas cap on the correct adapter. Someone once asked me a question I couldn't answer. If it only takes five adapters to test all of these different things, why can't I just buy five different gas caps and use them for test samples? Good questions. The way this fuel tank pressure cap tester works is you push the button and pump up a vacuum. If it overshoots too high, it fails to vent vacuum at about 11 inches. Then when it says stop pumping in the green, it waits and times how long it takes to leak down. If it leaks down too quick, it fails either way. Now, a fuel tank cap, gas cap, that fails to vent vacuum is a very dangerous commodity. It can cause over vacuum conditions in rupturing fuel tanks. This usually occurs because some other error has occurred and the fuel tank uh, vacuum has gotten higher because the small valve to vent that has become clogged with dirt and stuff. Here's an example of just such a gas cap. Notice all the dirt collected inside. This gas cap failed because it was being forced to vent because vacuum was going too high. Pulling vacuum in pulls dirt and other stuff in, as you can see trapped in this one right here. The other thing we're going to use is smoke testing, but not just the smoke machine itself. We're going to be checking using the flow meter and the smoke function. The smoke function comes last when we know for sure we're working for an absolute leak. Now, when you take your Schrader valve out of here, First, make sure you've got the right tools. Some of the early tools were causing damage to the Schrader valve, which wind up producing leaks later on. You have to remove this, and it's got reverse threads in order to connect your smoke machine. We're going to connect it to shop air or, in some cases, uh, nitrogen. It's up to you. Many manufacturers prefer nitrogen. All of the original equipment manufacturers require that their dealerships use nitrogen because of the flammability of the mixture that's being exhausted when you force air in. We're going to take our flow meter and we're going to do some testing. We want to have it show us full flow, like you see on the left, with our thumb off the vent. Then we close it up and make sure there's no leaks and it goes all the way to zero. This tests all of our hose and everything we're applying as a flow meter, making sure that the meter is working. Now, notice in the front of our machine here, we have two calibrated positions. Bottom right, we have the 40 thousandths activated, and we're showing you what the 40 thousandths leak looks like on the flow meter. At the top left, we have the 20 thousandths up active, and we're showing you what 20 thousandths looks like on the flow meter. We're going to be using a flow meter for more than this, but we're not going to do anything with smoke until we've done some very delicate testing with our smoke meter. And the first test we're going to do is for restrictions. We're going to hook the thing up, make sure the vent is open, and we're going to flow and see if we have any uh, restrictions. We should go to the top like this. If we don't go to the stop, if it's lower than normal, we have some kind of restrictions. So at the top left, that's normal. Anything in between is a restriction. That means we have flow, but not as much as we should have. And if it's blocked at the bottom, of course, that's where we're going to check for leaks. So these are the three things we're looking for. Full flow, restrictions, and blocking it off and looking for a leak. We're going to talk about blocking it off by activating the, the vent solenoid with a scan tool, pinching off a hose, or using a ground to energize the solenoid itself. Any one will work for us. Closing the vent solenoid will do it. As we said, we're going to use bi-directional scan tool if you have it. What we know is going to have to happen, this white wire coming from the EVAP canister vent solenoid going to the computer on C245 is going to be grounded to activate and close the solenoid. Remember, this is a normally open solenoid. It's closed when we activate it. 
The next thing we want to look at, of course, is using our scan tool. Closing the EVAP vent solenoid of the scan tool, we go to bidirectional EVAP vent solenoid. You usually have to have the engine off key on to do this. You can see we can activate, deactivate, and it tells us at the top the status. It's deactive, we can hit the activate. When it's active, we can hit the deactivate. Cycle it off and on several times. Or we can pinch off hoses. If we suspect the leak is any part, we're going to pinch off hoses. We're going to talk about doing this as part of our diagnostics. But if we thought we have a leak in the vent, we can pinch the hose off to the vent solenoid and verify it is, in fact, the vent. But we're going to talk more about dividing the system in half with these hoses. And the other system that we use, if nothing else is available, is we can actually supply a ground to the white wire we looked at in the schematic. Grounding this wire is going to activate the solenoid. When we activate it, we want to see the solenoid drop to zero. Now, one thing here, if mode 6 shows a leak, but no codes are present, check for intermittent operation. What this usually means is we occasionally get a failure. We can't get two consecutive failures to set a code. So mode 6 can show you some one-trip failures that may be there. It may be that you haven't had the right enabling conditions to run a second EVAP. What we do here is we cycle the vent off and on several times to make sure it goes up and comes back down. We want to be sure that it's not leaking or sticking or intermittent, and this is the best way to do it. With the de-energize, we go to the top. With energize, go fully to the bottom. Remember, it does not take a very large leak to be a 20 thousandths. So 20 thousandths leaks are very small in this the location of our ball is going to show us the size of the leak we're looking for. Now, we want to divide the system in half. Now, a lot of people say, why do you care? Well, once we get ready to use smoke, we're going to go know where to look for it. We want to find out if it's in the back of the car or the front of the car. Now, most of the time, the canister is located toward the rear of the car. But wherever it is, what we're going to do is we're going to pinch off the system right here, use a hose clamp to divide the system in half. If the leak is before this point, it's in the front of the engine. If the leak is after this point, it's in the rear of the engine. If it's present with the front sealed off, the leak is either in the vent, the canister, fuel tank, fuel cap. We know where to look for with our smoke. Now, smoke, we've all seen it. When it's like this, anybody can find it. Very easy to see. But this particular vehicle, this is looking back down the back of the engine with a bright light. You would not find this smoke unless you were specifically looking for it. It's a very small amount. It's a very small leak. And it's coming up back off the back side. In fact, it's almost impossible to see. The good news is, if you're using the Star Envirotech smoke machine, put out by OTC or Snap-on, a number of other manufacturers utilizing the core technology of Envirotech. They use the UltraTrace UV dye, and you can see it under light. So we've talked about all these questions about diagnostics, how you use the flow meter and the flow meter's gauge testing, and how we're going to use the smoke machine and divide the system in half. So that pretty much puts an end to diagnostics. But remember, what we're working on is our real-world car. Let's talk what we had. We had a DPFE sensor with the EGR. We fixed it. But when we went back, we found we had some other failures, which were EVAP-related. Now we've checked the EVAP. The next thing to check is the two at the top. What about the oxygen sensor? What did we test there, and what's going on?